Hi, in this session we are going to talk about analytics terminology. Analytics is one of those fields where uh, there are a lot of different terms that are thrown around by everyone. A lot of these terms sound very similar to each other yet they are used in different contexts. And there are terms which sound very different from each other yet they are used interchangeably. So someone who is new to the field is bound to get confused by this abundance of terminologies that is there in this field. The purpose of this video is to familiarize you with the popularly used analytics terminology so that when you come across a popular analytics term you understand the meaning behind it, the definition of the term and the context in which it's being used. Analytics as we all know can simply be defined as the process of breaking a problem into simpler parts and using inferences based on data to drive decisions. Analytics is not a tool or a technology. Rather, it's a way of thinking and acting. Now, analytics has widespread applications in spheres as diverse as science, astronomy, genetics, financial services, telecom, retail, marketing, sports, healthcare, and even gaming. But the term business analytics refers to the application of analytics specifically in the sphere of business. So this includes subsets like marketing analytics, risk analytics, fraud analytics, CRM analytics, loyalty analytics, operation analytics, as well as HR analytics. Of course, within business, analytics is used in all sorts of uh, industries like financial services, retail, telecom, healthcare, consumer goods, manufacturing, sports, hotels, airlines, etc. Basically, any industry where large amount of data is generated. Predictive analytics is another term that has gained popularity recently. According to Google, the popularity is largely driven by a string of business news headlines that came out in 2010 carrying this term. The term predictive analytics emphasizes the predictive nature of analytics as opposed to say the retrospective nature of tools like OLAP and BI. This is one of those terms that is designed by salespeople and marketers to add glamour to a business. Predictive analytics sounds fancier than just plain analytics. In practice, predictive analytics is rarely used in isolation from descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics refers to the set of techniques used to describe or explore or profile any kind of data. Any kind of reporting usually involves descriptive analytics. Data exploration and data preparation are essential ingredients for predictive modeling and these also rely heavily on descriptive analytics. So while analytics is a summation of descriptive analytics as well as predictive analytics, savvy salespeople and marketers have decided to bifurcate the two. So they call out predictive analytics separately from descriptive analytics just to make it sound more impressive, while the reality is that predictive analytics is rarely used in isolation from descriptive analytics. Like predictive analytics, advanced analytics too is a marketing-driven terminology. Advanced adds a little more punch, little more glamour to analytics and is therefore preferred by marketers. Big data analytics. Now this term has gained popularity very recently. This term specifically refers to the huge data sets that have come about nowadays which need to be analyzed and explored. So a lot of these data sets and we are talking about terabytes and even petabytes of data here. We are talking about billions of rows of data, thousands of fields, maybe even hundreds of thousands of fields. So when you're dealing with such data, conventional tools are not enough to analyze and explore this kind of data. In order to analyze this data, one needs specialized tools, tools that are designed to deal with such large amounts of data. And this is how the term big data analytics has come about. There is no clear cut definition of what is big data. You cannot say that if a data set is over one gigabyte or one terabyte, it's a big data set. The definition of big data is actually quite flexible and is dependent on the technology. So big data essentially refers to any data set which cannot be analyzed using the popular and conventional tools and requires specialized tools for analysis. As per the current technological developments, any data set which runs into terabytes or even petabytes is considered to be a big data. The definition of this may change as the technology improves. So if conventional tools are able to handle these sizes in the future, then the definition of big data would shift to even higher or bigger data sets. 
Data mining is a term that is most interchangeably used with analytics. Data mining is an older term that was more popular in the 90s and the early 2000s. However, data mining began to be confused with OLAP and that led to a drive to use more descriptive terms like predictive analytics. According to Google Trends, analytics as a term overtook data mining in popularity at some point in 2005 and is about five times more popular than data mining currently. So data mining is another term which is used interchangeably with analytics. It used to be a lot more popular earlier. Now analytics has also gained in popularity and has actually overtaken data mining in terms of popularity. Knowledge discovery is another term that gained currency towards the end of 2006. It is not as well known as some of the other terms, but its popularity is driven by a popular analytics website called KD Nuggets. KD in KD Nuggets, of course, stands for knowledge discovery. Knowledge discovery also refers to the same thing as analytics or predictive analytics or advanced analytics or big data analytics or even data mining. During the early stages of computing, there was a lot of comparisons between computing and human learning process. And this is reflected in the terminology as well. The term artificial intelligence was popular in the very early stages of computing and analytics around the 70s and the 80s, but is now almost obsolete. Machine learning is another term similar to artificial intelligence. This term too has lost its popularity in the recent past to terms like analytics and its derivatives. Business intelligence is a phrase that showed a lot of promise when it stormed to popularity in the late 90s. It started off as a broad phrase that encompassed descriptive and predictive analytics. However, it soon got mixed up with OLAP and reporting and now its usage is largely in the context of descriptive analytics or reporting or OLAP. OLAP or online analytical processing refers to descriptive analytic techniques of slicing and dicing the data to understand it better and discover patterns and insights. The term is derived from another term OLTP which stands for online transaction processing which comes from the data warehousing world. The term reporting is perhaps the most unglamorous of all terms in the world of analytics, yet it is also one of the most widely used practices within the field. All businesses use reporting to aid decision making. While it's not advanced analytics or even predictive analytics, effective reporting requires a lot of skill and a good understanding of the data as well as the domain. So you can clearly see two different kinds of terminologies being used. One is for descriptive analytics or reporting, which is essentially slicing and dicing of data. So terms like descriptive analytics, OLAP, reporting, BI or business intelligence, all of these refer to descriptive analytics essentially. Predictive analytics or predictive modeling is something that tries to predict the future based on what has happened in the past. And terms like advanced analytics, business analytics, data mining, machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, knowledge discovery, etc. generally refer to predictive analytics. Data warehousing. This may actually be considered more unglamorous than even reporting. Data warehousing is essentially the process of managing a database and involves extraction, transformation and loading of data. Data warehousing precedes analytics. The data that is generated by any business first has to be stored in a format where which can be used by analysts. So that essentially is the process of data warehousing where the data is collected and stored in a format that is readily accessible and usually business analytics or business analysts would take out the data from a data warehouse for any kind of analysis. One other term which is often confused with analytics is statistics which is the study of the collection, organization and interpretation of data. So a lot of analytical algorithms and techniques are essentially based on statistical concepts. So there's a huge overlap between statistics and analytics. The way to differentiate between the two is uh, more in terms of usage. While statistics is purely a science, it's a theoretical subject. Analytics is the application of this subject on certain problems. So business analytics is essentially refers to the application of statistical techniques on business problems or on business data. 
Similarly, analytics by itself is just an application of statistics on different problems or different data sets. Finally, we have this term which is uh, probably the newest of all of these terms. It has gained popularity very recently, but it is also one of the terms that has a bright future. It may actually overtake analytics in terms of popularity in the coming years. This term is data science. Data science, as the name suggests, is the science of dealing with data. So this is essentially the same thing as analytics, but this is a fairly uh, new terminology that has gained currency recently. And uh, correlated to this is the term data scientists. So like people who practice analytics are called analysts, people who practice data science are called data scientists. These are essentially some of the most popular terminologies that are used in the field of analytics. We hope that you've gotten enough understanding of these terms so that you don't get confused when you encounter one or more of these terms in the future.